Today I'm going to review the PowerX AA and AAA batteries for you and give you some real world performance analysis to see if these will work. My name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. I use these batteries all the time in my equipment, my electronics, cameras, recorders, and all that. So having battery performance is really important to me. But before I go on, if you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button that helps support my channel. And also please leave a comment, let me know how I'm doing, and give me some more ideas for videos. Let's get started, okay. So as you can see here, this is the, was this the C980 charger from Maha or PowerX, plus a huge pile of their batteries. As you can see, I'm well vested in these things. And I want to give you some analysis of how these batteries perform in real life. So when I first got these batteries, I said, hey, let's just plug them in and see how they perform. They didn't do that great, okay? So right off the shelf, the battery was actually pretty disappointing and I thought, oh my gosh, I've piled a bunch of money into these things. I've got this new charger, I've got this all this stuff and it's not working well. So I decided, all right, I'm, I'm an engineer, I better do some more analysis and I'm gonna show you what I found today. After getting the batteries right out of the box, you can see here, brand new out of the box, all this data, shows you that the average voltage on the batteries is 1.28 volt, uh, average uh, high 1.28, low 1.267. So batteries that have been sitting in the box for probably a few months, that's actually a really good performance metric. I charged up the batteries and then measured them after one day and they averaged about 1.37 volts. So that's actually pretty good for nickel metal hydride batteries, right? So not too bad. I did measure the room temperature using my handy dandy uh, meat thermometer and it actually works pretty well and i used my fluke 187 scope or a multimeter that's a professional multimeter so i'm highly confident in my measurements so i decided all right let's do an initial test i used the batteries in a nikon sb800 with a Pocket Wizard Flex TT5 and the transmitter, wherever the transmitter is. And this is a really rough test on batteries because flashes eat batteries for lunch. This pretty much sucks all the power out of the batteries really quick. And I got really excited because I have a bunch of Interloop batteries and I th I'm looking for a little bit more power. The PowerX claims to be a pro 2700 milliamp hours and okay, sounds good. The interloops are, I know, 2000 milliamp hours. So I did an initial test and you can see, you look at the data here, it didn't do so great. Look at that graph, drop off. After 400 flashes, one of the batteries completely tanked. I mean, it, it just died. So randomly choose one out of four of these things. Uh, my, my data ended up showing about a 12 to 14 percent conk rate after 400 flashes at quarter power flash 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 the batteries died and all of a sudden i'm panicked because i thought geez this shouldn't happen so i did some more testing you can see the performance here in the pocket wizard plus as well the data was okay but the where the voltage dropped on the flash was really concerning so I did an initial test on my zoom recorder and you can see a similar poor performance characteristic here as well, where after 150 minutes, so not even three hours of operation, the batteries are dying. They're just literally going off the cliff. In fact, uh, that was one battery and the other batteries seemed to hang up a bit. I did another test using my Sennheiser EW100G3 microphones. These things tend to eat batteries, but not as bad as a flash or my zoom. And so I did another test looking at the performance and the data. And the, I mean, the, the batteries didn't even get to, it's like two and a half hours. That's really bad. Look what happened to the battery voltage after 90 minutes, it starts dropping. And by 120 minutes, two hours, pfft, holy cow. 
So I contacted PowerX and said, hey, what's up with this? These batteries are performing like junk. I, these are really expensive. What's the deal? And they said, ah, that's the key. So the batteries have to be conditioned. So you need some sort of battery charger that conditions them to drop the power complete, or it, it's like it charges up the battery, then runs the battery slowly down, and then fully recharges the battery. And this C980 charger actually gives you a capacity measurement of all the batteries. After I did that test, things started looking a little bit better. Now, if you look here, you can see the data shows that the reported capacity, the average is 2,600 milliamp hours. The theoretical minimum for these batteries is 2,500. And sure enough, my data shows that the low of the sample of 18 different batteries ends up with a low of 2,556 milliamp hours with a high of 2,800 milliamp hours. Now that's pretty impressive considering my Inalute batteries run at about 2,000 milliamp hours. So I'm actually getting pushing uh, 40 plus percent more capacity in my PowerX than Inalute. That was really nice. And then I did a test of, okay, what is the battery voltage after three minutes of removing the batteries from the charger? And the battery voltage was pretty normal, dropped down to 1.439. And after three hours, the battery voltage dropped down to 1.422, completely normal. And after one day, the voltage dropped to 1.388. And I took a couple measurements later, three days afterwards, uh, two batteries dropped down to 1.38 and that appeared to be the nominal voltage of the batteries. Now we're talking, so what I learned initially just from this measurement is that the performance out of the box was really poor and even just recharging the batteries didn't do it. I took the batteries out of the box, put them in the charger and shoo, they started to tank. Not good, but now that I've done this measurement on the conditioning cycle of a charger like this, all of a sudden the data starts to look better. Now let's look at the hours after charge. I measured the voltage for three, four, seven, uh, no, is it uh, th four different batteries, sorry, at zero, three, and 24 hours later. And you can see the graph here. The battery voltage drops normally. That is expected right after you charge batteries. And now we'll go look at days after charging. And if you look at this graph here, you can see that the batteries, depending on which one they were, started anywhere from 1. Point, uh, was it 1.44 down to 1.42, and they all dropped towards a nominal voltage of 1.38 volts. That's much more in line with, with what I expect nickel metal hydride batteries to perform like. Now we're starting to see a little bit better in performance. And now I, after conditioning, I loaded the batteries into my Zoom H5, which it eats my inner loops up pretty quick. It's, my inner loops just for some reason don't do super well in my Zoom. I don't know why. And that's why one of the reasons why I bought the or got the PowerX batteries is simply to see if I can get more life out of them. And you can see I ran this zoom for 7.3 hours recording with Phantom Power on with an XLR mic, a Audio Technica AT875 mic running in mono dual record. I mean really cranking on this thing, Phantom Power eats up batteries like there's no tomorrow. And look what happened. Check that out. One hour, two hours, three, four, five, six, seven, and at seven hours, that's when the batteries started to roll over. That is incredible. I have never, ever used my Zoom to record continuously for seven straight hours. I'm sure somebody else will say, oh, I've recorded for 20, how come it doesn't run? This thing has a power input, okay? We're talking batteries for seven hours with phantom power on. After conditioning, that is really good. Let's look at the Sennheiser performance. And I have two batteries 
in each of these record or microphones let's see i'll show you just power x there this is the camera receiver and the microphone the microphone here in the ew 100 g3 the batteries i ran tests now this is an interesting test i ran these units for six hours starting with batteries fresh off the charger and you can see the data here fresh off the charger straight away and after six hours of operation the batteries dropped to 1.28 volts as you can see in this graph now normally once i'm done with a day of recording i would put the batteries on the charger recharge and i'd be ready for a next day but I wanted to do a little more abusive test, if you will, to see how well these PowerXs performed under real world conditions because sometimes you can't get to the charger for whatever reason. The next day, the batteries bounce back to 1.30, oh, 1.3 volts. And you can see that in the graph here. And then I began, I turned back on the microphone and the receiver hooked up to a camera with a microphone going and I began to run the batteries again and see how they worked. The data shows incredible performance here of restarting running for 8 hours and then 11 hours, 14 hours and then 16 hours. That's right, total accumulated time on the batteries in here running for six hours one day stopping and restarting another two uh, eight and all the way to 16 total hours of runtime on these power axes blew my mind let's take it the graph here you can see where the battery voltage starts then where it dropped to in six hours that is normal performance and th that follows the classic nickel metal hydride battery curve and then there's some recovery in the batteries that's completely expected and then we begin moving down now you'll notice that the receiver tends to eat up more batteries than the transmitter why that is i don't know but the transmitter ran continuously it didn't even die off the receiver ran for about 14 hours before it died off and then i just kept measuring for 16 to see what happened the receiver actually shut off because it the battery circuit said "Ooh, i'm dead so this unit shuts off after conditioning this performance is way way better than my initial testing where the battery voltage died in like two hours that was a real panic moment you can see the data here again initially just charging the batteries isn't that great but i come back here and now you can see that the battery performance is incredible way better than my inner loop batteries and now i'm going to show you the real kicker this is the tough test let me zoom in here all right so as you can see i have a lot of data collected 100 200 300 flashes standard deviation all the good stuff that you want to know and you can see here in this chart that i ran the flash for 600 flashes using a remote fire to trigger a pocket wizard 3 to trigger my flex tt5 to fire off a nikon sb800 at quarter power i measured all the battery voltages at zero in all the units and then every 100 flashes at quarter power i would measure and look what happened here the overall performance curve of the transmitter and receiver is incredible I, a lot of times when i'm shooting roller derby or some other event my receivers start to die after about two and a half hours they get a little blinky flashy indicating problems the battery voltage dropped and it dropped normally like i would expect in fact it outperformed my inner loops again as you can see in this curve now interestingly if you look at the standard deviation here between the different battery voltages it was less it was like 0.002 or something so that means that the battery voltages as they dropped you can see the graph here 
dropped very consistently. I didn't have any one battery completely fail. That's where the standard deviation was, would increase markedly. Now let me come over to the real coup de grace here where I have just the battery voltages tabulated. Where I have flash count here and then I have battery one, two, three, and four inside the Nikon flash. And look at that performance. Over 600 flashes, oops, messed up my chart, oh well. Over 600 flashes at quarter power and the battery voltage is still holding at 1.28. That's incredible. The original performance was horrible. Let me show you that again. The original performance in the batteries was horrible. I got to 400 flashes on this unit and one of the cells completely dropped off a cliff. The other ones were just barely hanging on. But after conditioning, look at this chart it is a completely normal discharge curve for nickel metal hydride batteries. There you go. So the lesson that I learned is you need to have some sort of conditioning charger or you have the mind-numbing activity of completely discharging all of your batteries and then completely recharging and then doing that a couple times. If you've got that much spare time, great. But I definitely recommend getting something like the C980 charger analyzer. This thing tells you exactly how much power is in each cell and you can remove each one as you go along and charge up all of your batteries. So this is the key to using and being happy with these PowerX batteries before I spill them all over the place is you must charge and condition the batteries to get that 2500 to 2800 milli milliampere hours out of them to get their performance. Data doesn't lie. Look at this graph here. Pretty, pretty incredible. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to my channel to support it. Links below to all the different items or modern items that I have shown you here so you can go check them out for yourself. Thank you for watching and enjoy the power.